All right, welcome everyone. Today's talk is we need something like Bell Labs for the games industry. And this is a talk that is straight out of IEEE Computer Magazine for a games theme special issue that will come out in a few months. But I thought I should record this now while all of the topics are in my head and put this up on YouTube as soon as possible. All right, let me uh, share my uh, slides and go from there. All right, hit play. And then do I have to bring this over here? Oh yeah, I gotta put my little, my little picture of me up in here in the corner. You don't get to see me full. All right, you need something like Bell Labs for the games industry. In games column number one for IEEE Computer, I, I spoke about the need for a research institute for the games industry. I pointed out how there really wasn't any place at the moment where there was even something close. I pointed out that universities were not really the right place for such an institute as universities do not do cross disciplinary well. We wish they did, but universities promote only on your contribution towards your home department's field. So if you focus on cross disciplinary research in a university on games, you'll most likely be looked at as someone who is running at one third speed with all contribution to the other disciplines disregarded. As I stated before, we kind of need a middle ground type of organization or laboratory where research ideas can be built out in a more advanced prototype. We need a laboratory that knows how to build games that can take these new developed technologies and put them into play in an online game. And most of the responses I received when this article appeared indicated that we needed to create something like the Bell Labs for the games industry. For the younger audience, this would be something kind of like Google Research Kernel for the games technology industry. Kernel takes the basic work of Google research and turns it into advanced prototypes for potential commercialization. So let's talk about the proposed games research institute. I'm gonna show you a figure that I put together that sort of puts everything all in one place about what I'm thinking on. So the games research institute has a number of different research directions that I think will be helpful for the future of games. I'm not going to be comprehensive but just talk about the ones that come immediately to mind, which means if you think I've forgotten something, let me know. I'll put it on the future diagram. So here's the diagram and it's, it's a mind map. It's like, here's all the different pieces and parts. And you can see the games research institutes in the middle and it's surrounded by networking, machine learning infrastructures for game development, game economies, AI characters, deep learning and metaverse design and creation. And I'm gonna try and step through these from a high level as to what should we do in these areas? So let's move on. So let's start with networking. Um, one of the big things that's happening now is everyone's trying to build the metaverse, but we don't really understand how to properly do the metaverse network infrastructure and how to standardize that network infrastructure so that everyone uses it with all of the different metaversi so they can be connected together. We want to be able to walk from one metaverse to another, bringing our character, our friends list, and any other data that's important. We also need to think about how to deploy and take advantage of 5G and 6G networking in our mobile games. As 5G and 6G get deployed, we may find that 5G and 6G is maybe going to be faster than Wi-Fi. With those higher speeds, we can then maybe put some of the computation that we're trying to do on our phone right now off onto a server somewhere. Some of that computation could be a large machine learning computation on a farm of NVIDIA machines or some comparable use of processor cycles that we cannot currently fit into our mobile devices. Uh, with such computational offloads, the biggest issue we will have is latency and latency is always an issue with networking. Uh, one of the biggest things in latency in most recent years has been game streaming architectures. Now, game streaming architectures are a big deal and hoped for a method for distributing games quickly while the player is still sitting at the machine. Right now, if I download an update for something as simple as Dota 2 on Steam, I could find myself with a message that says, it will take 45 minutes and who wants to wait for that? We need to do something better. So now Google built its Stadia game streaming architecture for exactly that, attempting to solve the computation offload issue and latency, but unfortunately they followed the same technological pathway that destroyed others, most notably Gaikai Online. I remember when I first tried Stadia from my office that I basically found it unusable despite the fact that I had a reasonably high-speed network connection. So Stadia, while still running, is a dead man walking in terms of technological prowess. 
And game streaming architectures are very important, both for game distribution and for keeping our players happy while they wait for new content to download and execute. Basically, we need to figure out how to get away from streaming just big bitmaps with the computation of the game being done on a server or a GPU combo somewhere on the network to something that can send us instantly executable small pieces of the game almost immediately so that we can maybe load a new level of a game in three to four seconds. Machine learning infrastructures are a big research topic for the future of games. In fact, machine learning based games and machine learning based game engine architectures are going to be the future. It's going to be the future for game engines because there's a lot of things that you can do in machine learning that are critical for games and that we really need to be able to do well. Game engines with machine learning slapped on as an afterthought are just not the right way to go. It's an important research topic for us to build a game engine that's fully machine learning based with that machine learning built in from the beginning. Game economies. Game economies are also an important research topic for the future of games. We start with in-game currencies. In-game currencies are used to purchase in-game objects such as clothes for our game character, better weapons for our game character, and health potions for our game character. We also earn in-game currencies as we play, and that monetization has to be balanced and perceived as fair in order for us to keep players from leaving the game. We need to understand the dynamics of our in-game economy so that our in-game currency is balanced, so that the, our game is balanced. Now, one of the things changing how game economies work is the global nature of the game industry. We need to be able to exchange our in-game currencies for our currencies throughout the world. We also have the confound of cryptocurrencies supported by blockchain systems and their various tokens. Basically, cryptocurrencies are another currency, one not protected by any government regulation, one that may exhibit wild swings and perceive value with respect to traditional government-backed currencies. We also have the problem that many of these cryptocurrencies appear to be a dodges of the tax man from whatever currency that flowed into the particular cryptocurrency at hand. We also have their perceived scam-like origin and crypto theft stories that make us all nervous. I think yesterday somebody lost $300 million of cryptocurrency and that's not a small deal. We also have the people that miss the Bitcoin run up that really would like to set themselves up to be instant billionaires with whatever new crypto coin they create or early adopt. So there's significant relevant research in architectures, security and socialization that must be performed so that this all is perceived as well designed and organized predictable exchange of value. NFT games, we also have NFT, non-fungible token games running around in their infancy, making all of us say scam games under our breath until what it, it is all about is significantly organized and clarified. And it's not just saying it's all part of the metaverse that will make that happen. We really need to get NFT games spelled out what they are, legitimized and made rock safe. AI characters. AI characters have always been a big deal in games. Right now, if you want to talk to an AI character, it's usually text-based, but we're going to have natural language processing any day. Right now, we're getting used to talking to our Alexa devices our Google Home devices, and to Siri. Siri, so we can have an exemplary of how bad voice recognition can be and still be sold as a component part of an otherwise well-done product. Natural language processing, NLP. We would love to be able to use natural language processing to speak to our game's AI characters with those characters understanding what we are saying in sufficient rigor so that they can meaningfully answer back. We want that NLP capability to be connected to our AI characters and their understanding of the game story inside of which they reside. This is a big research topic, but one that can start once you have spelled out what you would like to experience. Once we have a rigorous NLP capability, we then need to instrument our game players with sensors that provide a measured and probabilistic understanding of the human player's physical and emotion state to the AI characters. These AI characters will have a virtual, physical, and virtual emotion state as well as an authored dynamic personality. They perform within the bounds of the story's narrative. And this is all big research and software integration and hopefully leads us to games with emotional significance similar to or exceeding what we currently see in well-done film. And deep learning. Deep learning is a large part of the future of games research. 
one of the main things that people use deep learning for right now in games is gameplay understanding. Gameplay understanding is so that we can figure out what are the live humans doing in our game? And do they like the pieces and parts of our game? And is there something else that we can provide them or understand that they like so that when we go make changes to this game, that we can actually make those changes somewhat automatically with a machine learning system. Automatic AI bot creation and automatic neural network training are related. What we'd like to do is to be able to watch master players play a game, and understand how they play games such that we can then create an AI bot that can mimic that game play. Those AI bots can then play against live humans using the same or similar decisions as made by the master players. What we want is to, to do is capture how master players play a game to particular proficiency. And we'd like to make it so that there's automatic neural network training there so that we don't have to author a training set by hand. And what we'd really like to have is neural networks that can be trained automatically by watching master players and using a bed of prior game interpretations and understandings such that we can, again, rather quickly create AI bots that can interact and play inside of our games using deep learning with humans. Metaverse design and creation. Right now, everyone's just rebranding their game and saying it's a metaverse portal. What people are expecting is that the metaverse will be an augmented reality or virtual reality experience. There are many research areas for the design and creation of the technology that will support the metaverse. Let's start with AR. What we really need are good experience authoring tools that will allow us to author such experiences at a high level. Right now, we have crude AR authoring tools that require us to develop our metaverse eye at the game engine level. That takes too long, but it is not as fast as it ought to be. Um, better light AR hardware is something we drastically need to make to met the metaverse a success. Right now, we're going fairly heavy with fairly heavy AR headsets that are not comfortable for long-term use. What we really want are lightweight glasses that are about the weight of a pair of sunglasses, maybe a slight bit more to hold the battery, but not a whole lot more. We would also like smaller and lighter tracking. Right now, tracking hardware tends to be pretty big. And what we'd like to do is make it small so it can fit inside of the sunglasses for our AR experience. And for the VR realm, we also need high-level experience authoring tools. Another issue is we need to make the interfaces of VR and AR standardized so that everybody knows how to get into the metaverse and move around and interact and find the settings UI in a standardized place. Right now, we don't have that. So if you go into the game number one in the metaverse and then jump to game number two, it has a completely different interface. We don't standardize those interfaces. We're not going to get far in the metaverse if we don't standardize these are interfaces. Just as for AR, we need smaller, lighter tracking for VR. We need a way to not have to wear a big, heavy weight on our face that covers our eyes up. What we'd really like to do is use large screen TVs. Gamers love large screen TVs and HMDs, not so much. The biggest issue with large screen TVs is how do we turn those large screen TVs into stereo and track our head with a lightweight tracker and maybe a pair of lightweight $15 active center glasses once we have figured out how to turn stereo back on in those TVs. So wrap up. These are some of the interesting research topics for our Games Research Institute. And once you build all of this special hardware and invent all of the required software, we then should have some way of passing that all the new technology to smart students for trial inside of the games they're building in class. And then when that technology has been proven, it can then be sent to a center for incubation and acceleration and turned into a product or a technology that can be put into the commercial game pipeline. Again, here is the picture of what I'm thinking about for the Games Research Institute, and it's missing things, of course. So please let me know what else you think we ought to look at. These are the things that are right at the top of my head. So the real question is, where should we put this research institute? It's difficult. Everyone's going to want this near them. In the US, uh, Los Angeles and San Francisco are the natural choices. Uh, San Francisco, Silicon Valley, because that's where technology comes out of. And that's where it tends to get turned into commercial products. Los Angeles, because Los Angeles is the largest uh, game development uh, city in America. Globally. Tokyo, Shanghai, Seoul, London, Dubai are also places 
that would probably enjoy having the technology for the metaverse being built in their own backyards. And the real answer might be we need multiple of these games research institutes throughout the world. So in this presentation, we have mostly focused on what research ought to be done to improve the technological foundation of the games we build in the future. And our proposed solution, of course, is to build a games research institute that develops new technologies and freely licenses those technologies and patents to the member companies that fund and support this research institute. An additional component of this research institute might be patent litigation support on historical technologies archived by this institute for use in the defense of companies from non-practicing entities. We will cover what such support might look like in a later issue of the games column. So I'm Mike Zida. I have a Facebook group where you can see these articles and also on my YouTube channel, which is just Mike Zida all run together. Uh, you can also find this video and other videos in this series. And if you have any questions or comments, you can either send it via my email or you can put it up in the Facebook group and we'll have an online discussion. So happy to see you today. We'll see you next time. And this has been the Games Column with Mike Zida. And I will see you next time. Have a great day.